Quick example of what can we do with H2D. We can have carbon fiber object completely surrounded with the regular material. But I have other examples too. Hello, welcome to my tech farm. Bamboo Lab sent the H2D 3D printer for the testing. And actually I got this box a little bit before H2S. But for me, more logical step was to test that printer first and then to see advantages of H2D, which is equipped with the two nozzles. I got this box for free, but there is no additional payment. I believe that it still counts as a sponsored video, but this channel has its own sponsor too, and that's the Polymaker. Just very shortly the specifications. This printer is equipped with two nozzles and two hot ends, so it can print with two materials without need for the purge waste in this case. The maximum temperature on the nozzle is 350 degrees Celsius. It can have active heated chamber up to 65 degrees Celsius, so it is really ready for many technical filaments too, and we can print with two colors. Of course, there are some limitations. The rigid filament can go into the left hot end, the TPU or flexible materials into the right hot end, but more about this later. The area which can be reached by both nozzles is 300 by 320 millimeters in X and Y direction, and 325 mm along the z-axis. It has hardened steel nozzle and extruder, so you can really print with those uh, carbon fibers and other abrasive filaments too. Now this printer is on the market in more than half years and there are many many videos about it, so it is hard to do some overall review, I think it's not even needed. Instead I want to test uh, my things which I'm curious about. First of all I want to see how it prints with those technical filaments. If you're not familiar with H2S, if I print some very brittle filaments, it will break inside during that outer wearing process. And here, I'm just guessing at this moment, if I insert that rigid filament into the left nozzle, during the homing, it will be on a little bit bigger distance from the right edge. So there is a chance that it will not break inside, but I'm not sure at this moment. So I want to see how it prints with those brittle filaments. Also, I want to see if I can check my theory about the core filaments with the better layer adhesion. Because with this, maybe I can print some filaments where inside will be some uh, filament with a weaker layer adhesion, like silk filament, and outside would be the tough PLA, which has the best layer adhesion from all PLA, which I tested from the Bamboo Lab, and to see what will be the final results in the layer adhesion. Of course, another big advantage of having two nozzles is to print some base material and having a support from some other materials. With this, uh, not only that uh, we will easier remove those supports, but we can have zero gap and that uh, aligning surface will be much smoother. Uh, one more thing I want to check, because I noticed when I use CoPE as a support material for the PLA, uh, when I printed these cards for my wife and for her colleagues in the office, uh, I noticed quite weak layer adhesion on that layer when I used the support material as a separation layer because uh, the purge material, if you use only one nozzle, is not enough. It is enough to change the colors, but if we have two different materials, I notice when I assemble this and insert the card, that uh, there the layer adhesion is quite weak, and having two separate nozzles is huge advantage in this case. And just one more nice example for the regular color PLA printing. These pigments, maybe you saw in my earlier videos, are the only objects which I print, even if I have a lot of waste materials. Because when my youngest daughter have a guess, they always want one of these uh, penguins as a souvenir. And if you pay attention, it has three colors, but two colors are dominating, the white and the black. So if they are in a separate nozzles, then we can save a lot of time and materials. But enough from the theory, let's unbox it and see how it prints. There is an AMS inside. There are many useful things in the toolbox, including this spare hot end 0.4mm nozzle. Currently I need this Allen key to unlock the AMS so I can take it out. So this is that famous extruder with the two nozzles, linear rails on the x-axis, linear rods on the y-axis. Uh, there is a filtration system. Press it down here, there is a filter inside. <laughs> By the way, don't forget to remove this foam from the corners. About AMS2 Pro, it is able to even to dry the filament, but before the printing, during the printing not. 
These inputs are ceramic, so it can accept even some carbon fiber filaments, which can be bended and they will not break inside. By the way, the bottom is open, so now we can access easier to these Teflon tubes in case we have some broken filament. This is a big advantage compared to the version 1. AMS is connected to, and we need only this cable and the Teflon tube, which is connected to the right extruder. This is the back ventilation door, it is connected to the exhaust fan and it will be enabled if we print a PLA or PTG for example. And the input for that cold air will be here, it will open during this ventilation. Ah yes, and I need a USB if I want to record the time lapses. I really like to use this Sandisk UltraFit, this one is 32GB and it is really small and it will not stick out too much. Let's turn it on. Choose in the language, Europe. It will do some self-calibration now. PLA marble. It's time to print something. 23 minute benchy. And a warning that I have to close the doors. Okay. Because the cooling is through these ventilation doors. It started, but there is a small cheating here because they place it closer to that aux fan. Even with this bulky head, it's quite fast and it is quiet, same like H2S. It has lights from the left and right side, but I'm missing one from the front too, the most important one. I already know bed adhesion is great until the bed is hot and when it cools down, it will be very easy to remove it. Quality of the bench is great, no question about that. Yes, they placed it closer to the aux fan for this overhang to came out better. I'm inserting one more spool because soon I will start printing in two colors. Pretty basic and it goes to the external spool holder. And this will go into the left extruder. Panda and it looks like it will have a color change almost in every layer. Not the best colors for this. This is some kind of beige and brown color, marble. I will just show you one color change. It started now, this is real time speed. Switching the nozzle. Cleaning it a little bit. Printing again on the perch tower. And it continues with the printing. Huge difference compared to the one nozzle system. Actually, I noticed view from the side is better through this window, because here we have the light. Only pay attention to the privacy, what is in the background during your recordings. It's finished and the bed cooled down. It's really nice, there is no question that there will be a color mixing, because it uses two separate nozzles. And this is all the waste material, so there is no purge material. My data just didn't like the colors, <laughs> so I had to reprint one. New setup, black PLA outside and in the AMS white and orange, PLA basic. It finished the orange part and now it is much faster because it is switching on the left and right nozzle, black and white colors. No more orange in these objects, so it will be finished in 25 minutes, relatively fast. They are finished, quality is great. The quality is great, no question about that, but let's analyze the waste material. Perch tower. And the question I'm getting if it is needed, well, if you don't want this kind of spots on your object, then yes. And this is the purge material, which is not much. I mean, I'll include here the footage because I printed exactly the same G code on P2S. Now let's print some core filaments. I could see online that others are doing this, not core, but some dual color filaments. And according to others, this works. Core will be from silk PLA and skin from tough PLA filaments. These are weakest and strongest bamboo PLA materials I ever tested. And I want to check the theory that having a carbon fiber core and non-reinforced materials as a skin will result a stronger layer adhesion, closer to skin material. Here you can see the printing of the core from silk PLA filament. And I'm using two different nozzles, so there will be no contamination between two materials. And this is the covering, again, the tough PLA. And I have approximately 80 meters of core filaments. 
It's hardly visible, but the core is there, surrounded completely by skin material. But this theory will be tested in a separate video. For next demonstration, I'm using Polymaker PTG-CF and new PTG, both already exist in the Bamboo Studio. We all know that there are people who are afraid to touch objects from carbon fiber filaments. This is PTG-RCF08, very rigid filament, and this Polymaker's new PTG with a great layer adhesion. Review is in the progress. Carbon fibers are melted into plastic and I'm not afraid touching them. But even me is avoiding these filaments if they have some friction with other objects. And uh, here is an interesting solution. I'm printing these hooks side by side three objects. The first one is pure PTG. Second one is PTG CF in the core and it will be surrounded with a regular PTG. And the third one is carbon fiber version. And of course I'm using two separate nozzles for this printing, which will be finished in approximately one hour. <laughs> As my reminder, all carbon fiber filaments need to be dry before the use. They are marked, pure PTG, this is the mix and this is pure carbon fiber version. And about this uh, PTG CF, uh, it has to be dried before every printing and this drying was not enough, but that's why this method is quite good. Absolutely no signs of the carbon fibers outside, but let's check how strong they are. And now I have so many new questions, like can we use it for the reinforcing? What ratio is better? Which materials will stick to each other? Can we make carbon fiber object tougher by adding some non-reinforced material? Now let's talk about the supports. In this case I will use PLA with CoPE, which will be used only as an interface layer. This is the printing with two materials. And for the reference I printed it from one material. Removing of the supports is easy in both cases, settings are good. But in this case I don't have supports starting from the object, those are harder for removing if I use only one material. And the difference is in contact surface, since with a different support material I have zero gap between the support and the main object. But there is a hidden problem if you are using one nozzle, different flush is not enough because the system thinks this is the same material only different color. And the object will be weaker on that layer. It's time to check this. Hyper PLA in red color and now I print my layer attention test objects. But uh, somewhere in the center approximately I will have just one interrupting layer from the CoPE simulating the supports. And I have two printings. One using two nozzles left and right extruder on H2D. But the other using the same extruder and both filaments will be in the AMS. Just one layer of CoPE is finished. Switching back to red. And now this is two nozzle printing version. And the red color is completely independent from this one line of CoPE. Switch to the right nozzle. And now let's test them. Dual nozzle version without contamination. Typical for this filament, very strong. Single nozzle version. I know it is weak, but not this weak. Of course we can increase the purge material, but what is scary that outside we cannot really see the difference. Immediately let's jump into the deep water. This is the most brittle filament I ever tested. Printed objects are quite strong and rigid, but the filament itself is very brittle. And if we be able to print with this filament and it will not break inside, then it can print with anything. It will go to the external spool holder and into the left nozzle. Hmm, it's even in the list. I can see filament is extruded, so far it's okay. This is very critical part, and if it survives then it will be fine. Oh, and this is the first time I'm printing with this kind of technical filament, and it will do the full auto leveling, so it will be a good test for this very brittle filament. And this is the end of the outer leveling, I think, and this is the most critical part, so if it will survive this, then everything will be fine. <laughs> it's doing just a little bit more exercise, in case if it's not broken yet. And look at that, it's printing. 
you cannot really see my face but I'm so happy because of this now I have a new primary printer for technical filaments <laughs> sorry H2S but don't worry you still have bigger print area by the way these are real functional parts I will present them later but very quickly I have to solve the ventilation because currently only my Exxon carbon is connected to that ventilation hole that smell of the ASA is quite bad in my future comparison videos I will have this elimination hook test where the weakest will always fall out and at the end we will get the winner hooks have some flat aligning surfaces and I need this start and end chain link for the test to have the same load for the edge hooks too I think it will be interesting just another print from this brittle filament and it's completely fine I got few requests to check the bed heating I set the temperature to 60 degrees Celsius at the beginning we can even see the heater two minutes later the temperature is 60 degrees Celsius according to printer six minutes later when the printing would start the temperature difference is approximately six degrees Celsius maybe a little bit shorter review but you will see a lot of this printer in my future review videos because uh, this will become my primary printer for the testing I'm so happy that I can print even those brittle filaments with uh, this printer and basically there is no limitation I could print uh, every filament I tested on this channel with this printer and having two nozzles give me so much new possibilities for example recently I got the idea to test the telomere if you remember extremely strong in x and y direction but extremely weak along the z-axis and I can use this as a reinforcement so we can get something like uh, continuous fibers in the printed object I'm quite sure that you will have some ideas too so write me down in the comment section if you have some good suggestion thank you for watching this video until the end thank you Bambolab for sending me this printer for the testing and to all the others happy printing